All right, so it is time to teach you VQ mismatch as if you're a fifth grader, because this topic seems really confusing when you go through it for the first time. I understand that there's a lot of terms, there's a lot of math, there's a lot of pathology, and there's a lot of physiology. And so this is a topic that shows up on every single USMLE and complex. Yes, it will be on your exam. The test writer knows that it's complex, the test writer knows that you don't understand it, and the test writer knows that unless you're going to be a pulmonologist or a critical care physician, you're never going to master this topic. So let's simplify this, keep it stupid, and explain it to you like you're a fifth grader. So just as a brief overview, when you hear the term VQ, V stands for ventilation, and Q stands for perfusion, which I will in this video henceforth call percussion. And the reason I'm calling it percussion is because I want your brain to memorize that Q equals percussion. V ventilation, P percussion. So a VQ ratio is ventilation on top of percussion. Now a VQ mismatch refers to a condition where one of either ventilation or percussion changes. And this happens to be the most common cause of hypoxemia. And on your exam, if there's a VQ mismatch, your patient will have an increased AA gradient. Now, for the purposes of this video, we're not going to talk about AA gradients, so we'll just put that to the side for now. These are interrelated topics, but they are completely different topics. So a VQ mismatch is not the same as an AA gradient. Again, a VQ mismatch is just either ventilation or percussion is changing somewhere in the lung, either, nor either due to a normal physiological condition or in 99% of the cases on your exam due to some type of pathology. So the ratio is V over Q. And again, one of either V or Q has to change. And when that changes, your ratio changes. So this part is really just math. And hopefully you remember this from high school. So whenever you We'll, we'll do the first example where percussion decreases, okay? So anytime you have the denominator going down or getting closer to zero, our ratio increases markedly because as that denominator gets smaller, our ratio as a whole gets larger. So that is to say that in states where percussion decreases or goes to zero, we have an increased VQ ratio. So this is called dead space, and it refers to a volume of inhaled air that does not participate in gas exchange. So think about it, ventilation or air coming in unchanged, percussion, blood flow coming in, decreasing and going to zero. So you have this big, we'll call it a gas chamber, but you have this big lung that's filled up with air but no blood is getting to it. And that's why it's called dead space because it's this big tank of air that can't do crap. It is just dead space. I think the name makes perfect sense. Now dead space can be either physiological or pathological. And let me explain what that means. So let's look at some lungs here. Now recall that at the top of the lungs, there is this conducting zone of anatomical dead space. So naturally, as you get toward the apex or the apices of the lung, VQ ratio is increased. And that's because air rises and blood settles. So air rises, blood settles due to gravity. Just think about it that way. It'll make more sense in your brain. So as you go up higher at the top of the lung, more air is rising, which means ventilation V is going up. But relatively speaking, percussion Q, blood flow, can't get up as much because gravity makes it settle. So at the top, V is higher, Q is lower, VQ as a ratio is higher. So in a conducting zone, or in what we call anatomical dead space, VQ ratio is naturally increased, not because of any pathology, just because that's how the lung works and that's how gravity works. And what we're talking about is the nose, the trachea, and the bronchi. Now in that anatomical dead space, ventilation is going to be relatively increased, percussion is going to be relatively decreased. Again, this isn't pathological. There's a natural conditioning of that ventilated air that's going on. That's why it's an anatomical dead space, but it's not like the lung is messed up per se. This is just what you get naturally at the top of the lung. And then the opposite is true in the alveolar dead space, that as you go down 
because ventilation, relatively speaking, isn't as high as your percussion Q, as your blood flow, because again, gravity is going to pull that lung down to the base of the lungs. You have an alveolar dead space in the respiratory zone, which is your respiratory bronchioles, plus your alveolar duct, plus your alveolar sac, plus your alveoli. Now, the combination of the anatomical dead space plus the alveolar dead space that's what we're interested in. So this is just a little bit of an aside. Again, I'm not, I want you to understand that when we talk about dead space, you can look at the top of the lung and say that we have wasted ventilation because that gas is up, because it floats up and percussion is down. And then at the base of the lung, we could say that we have wasted perfusion because relatively speaking, in semi-normal conditions, Q percussion is up because that blood settles at the bottom but ventilation isn't as good at the bottom. So you have two areas of wasted dead space. But again, it's the total, right? It's the sum of the anatomical dead space plus the alveolar dead space that is the total dead space in the lung or the physiological dead space in the lung. So that was a big aside, but I just want your brain to understand where V is higher or lower and where Q is higher or lower in a normal lung. That's important to understand so that you can conceptualize dead space if you actually get a pathological decrease of percussion when your VQ ratio goes up. So getting back to, to where we are. So we're, we're looking at a situation here where ventilation V is unchanged, but percussion Q, our blood flow in our denominator, is decreasing in some type of pathological case. And in these instances, VQ ratio goes up and we have dead space, i.e. we have a big tank of air, right? We have a big lung ventilating just fine, but because blood flow is impeded, our VQ ratio goes up and it's a big wasted dead space. Now on USMLE or Comlex, this is only going to occur in the case of an embolism. Now in 80% of cases, 80% I would say of the questions you could be asked this will be a pulmonary embolism because it's a pulmonary embolism. It's right there. It's affecting the lungs. But recall that you have other types of emboli as well. So it could be a fat embolism. It could be an air embolism. It could be an amniotic fluid embolism. So the test writer has lots of different avenues to go after some type of emboli causing increased VQ ratio, i.e. causing dead space. So on your exam, what I want you to remember is the word embolism and change the L to an up arrow because in cases of embolism, L where L is that up arrow, your VQ ratio goes up and you have dead space. And if it helps you, then change dead space to dead space where the PE reminds you of pulmonary embolism and by one further step, just embolism in general. So bottom line here, embolism, VQ ratio goes up, you have dead space. That's all you got to know. V doesn't change, Q goes down because the blood flow, the, the percussion, that's what's decreasing here, that creates dead space. Now let's do the other example. So in this case, let's say that percussion Q is unchanged, right? There's no change in our blood flow, but ventilation V decreases or goes to zero. So when you divide zero by anything, hopefully you remember this from high school, you get zero which is to say that when ventilation goes down and as it approaches zero and percussion doesn't change, when your numerator drops, your ratio drops. So a decreased VQ ratio is what happens when ventilation goes down, but percussion is unchanged. And this is referred to a shunt. So we talked about increased VQ ratio is dead space. This one where it's decreased, this is called a shunt. And let me explain why that's called a shunt. So we've talked about that naturally in the lungs toward the apex, you have an increased VQ ratio and towards the base, you have a decreased VQ ratio, relatively speaking. Now in a pathological lung condition where you have inherent lung pathology, this gets exacerbated. And what the body will try to do if the lung itself is diseased is undergo a compensatory mechanism called hypoxic vasoconstriction. And so what the body essentially is doing here is the body is saying, okay, I feel that my VQ ratio is down. How do I get it up? So the body's like, how do I do some math and increase this ratio? And what the body, the body did really well in high school math class. And the body knows 
that if you decrease percussion, right, if you decrease the denominator, just like we talked about a few minutes ago, this ratio will increase. So the body, while it's very good at math, is really stupid sometimes at compensatory mechanisms. So the body says, okay, I want to decrease percussion. So I am going to vasoconstrict and shunt blood or direct blood to a different area of the lung. So what the body's trying to do is decrease Q, decrease percussion to increase this ratio and make it so that it's not a decreased VQ ratio, but that it increases. And so it does hypoxic vasoconstriction and it shunts blood to a different area. So this is how I want your brain to think about it. It's not 100% correct, but this will make more sense conceptually. So because of this compensatory mechanism, a decreased VQ ratio is called a shunt. Hypoxic vasoconstriction will occur. Now, because of this, no gas exchange is occurring and venous blood, the content is basically equal to pulmonary capillary blood. And what I need you to memorize, this is the most important point. So focus here. If you've been kind of just like, in the background, laying on your couch, looking at your phone, listening to me blabble on here, this is where it's time to focus. If you give a patient with a decreased VQ ratio, i.e. with a shunt, if you give that patient 100% oxygen, it does not improve the P little a O2 in a shunt. But this is different than in dead space because in a patient with dead space, which means a patient with increased VQ ratio, if you give that patient 100% O2, that does lead to improvement. And there's a huge difference there. And it, it, I don't want to get overcomplicate this, but it has to do with the fact that you have a shunt, you have hypoxic vasoconstriction. So when you give somebody oxygen, it doesn't do anything in a shunt, but it will help the patient with dead space. And that is a big differentiating factor on your exam that the test rater likes to test you on. So these decreased VQ ratios, these shunts, these are going to be due to primary lung or alveolar pathology. So in the, in the case of a shunt, the lung itself is diseased. So we're talking about things like COPD, emphysema, pneumonia, atelectasis, cystic fibrosis, um, foreign body aspiration. So something gets into the lung, there is inflammation or a problem in the lung. So primarily, it's a lung problem. And so the mnemonic to memorize this is lung pathology, change the L to a down arrow. So any lung pathology, VQ ratio is going to be down. Any embolism, remember the L in embolism was an up arrow, any embolism, the VQ ratio will be up. So that's all you really need to know for your exam. I, I, I wanna make this stupid. I want your brain to really understand what these Vs and Qs mean. And, what causes them. So I don't think it's that complex if you break it down like this, but let's just do a summary chart here to wrap up. So again, VQ ratio, when it's increased, it's dead space. When it's decreased, it's a shunt. What causes this? Dead space is an embolism, most commonly a PE, but also other types of emboli. And a shunt is going to be a primary lung issue, COPD, cystic fibrosis, atelectasis, etc. Is the patient going to respond to 100% oxygen in dead space? Yes. In shunt, because of hypoxic vasoconstriction, no. If you know this table, you're golden. So I hope this was helpful. Again, I know I kind of oversimplified things, but that's the goal here. I want you to understand this. I want you to get the free points. This is a complex topic, but it doesn't need to be. So good luck.